Hi guys, Squirrel here. Welcome back to another Satisfactory video. Now, in the last one we started our steel production, uh, which is down here, and we started to make our steel ingots. Today, we are going to start making some end products out of steel ingots. Specifically, we're going to start making steel pipes, and we're going to start making the steel encased beams. Now, this set me on the road of a couple of things. So first of all, I've basically gone and put up some more floor out here, I've also put some wall out here and I've started to lay some conveyor um, struts which I'll show you in a second what we're going to do. But essentially what's going to happen is uh, all this steel that's coming out of here right now is going to start to be uh, constructed if you like here. We're going to start making the end products here. But to do it, to do one of them, the encased uh, steel beams, we're going to need concrete. So we need to get concrete over here. Which then made me think, okay, now's the time to start building, uh, or start thinking about building our main bus, which is what uh, this is going to be. So we're going to have, effectively, construction stuff going on down the left side of here, and then any kind of products that are needed um, into this construction are going to be coming in here. Uh, and anything that obviously gets produced that needs to go back out will carry on down the line. Now these can go, you know, higher than this. We don't need to... Um, to stay just at two these are stackable so if we run out of space vertically we just add another level all the way up to the next floor whatever however high we decide that is uh so that's something for later but i put some walls here because the concrete is um all the way down here and we need to start getting some things down there so that also got me thinking well you know we've got all this kind of copper wire copper cable construction going on here we're not actually doing much with this at the moment either we should start belting this away so we also need a bus for this bit uh, this is obviously going to be reserved here for future uh, construction. Maybe we're going to do some stuff with the cables, uh, that kind of thing. But for now, let's just worry about the concrete. We need to get the concrete over there. Now, simplistically, we could just, you know, tie it up to there and off it goes kind of thing. But I like to kind of think ahead a little bit. I, I, I like to take the point of view of kind of what you do in Factorial, which is you try to get things onto a bus and then break off uh, what you need from the bus rather than take things directly it tends to work out better in the long run so for example here i think what we should probably do is um, we should probably bring that over here onto the bus for example so what kind of is that convey about one i don't know what rate this stuff's coming in at. it looks like uh well that's a mark two that's a mark one but if ever we wanted to bring in more what's that that's a conveyor belt that's a conveyor belt uh, I, just looking at that, I suspect it's going to be a Mark 1 for now, so we'll just go with a Mark 1. Uh, so if we go Mark 1 to that spot there, like that, and, you know, essentially this this cable, which is... How quickly is it making this stuff? 15 per minute. I think this needs to be scaled up. It's not for today's job. 45 per minute. Not today's job, but this all needs to be scaled up. Uh, but what we can do for now is just get this stuff onto a bus here. Uh, we can come out of there. So what I'm going to do is just perhaps put it on uh, that side. Like that. We could perhaps go like this. Uh, maybe we can get away with doing that. It depends how naff it looks. Because obviously it's going to start encroaching on, on this one. Uh, it depends on how quickly we can elevate up, I guess. Right from there. It doesn't like it allows you to do that. I just don't like it clipping through, um, which is what it has a tendency to do. I mean, you can get belts to just literally go right through each other, and the game the game just doesn't care. But I just I don't really like it. I try to avoid it if I can. Uh, so this one here will obviously come out there. So we can perhaps come to, uh, for example maybe to here what's that that's on the grid so we could go like that and if that lets me do that yes it does we can do this and like that there you go so then what would happen obviously from here is you would basically do that and you would do that come on and you know now you're starting to put stuff that you're producing over here onto the bus and you can break it off from there as you want so with this one what we'll do is i'm probably going to run out of iron plates doing all this 
as an example, uh, we'll break this one. So we just simply go with a splitter. And we stick a splitter on the line. We need to work out roughly where we want it. We want it about here, which is about there. So we go about there like that. Put a splitter on the line and then simply do this. And that's how you can take a feed. Now, if, you know, if it turns out there's not enough concrete coming in and this starts to dry up and that starts to dry up, you know, you need to go back and basically put more on, <laughs> put more coming in uh, as you're splitting it off. That's just a standard supply demand problem that you're going to have to face endlessly in this game and Factorio. Uh, that's just part of what we do when you're building a factory. So what we'll do is we'll get this over here. Uh, probably run out of iron plates doing it. Uh, now we just need to decide where exactly we're going to put it on the bus. Like, do we go left side, right side? You know, this is where the, you know, the decision, there's no real correct way of doing this. But, you know, if I go here, then later on I want to go there. I'm in trouble if I go there and then I want to split it off. I'm going to have to faff around later. So for now, we'll, we'll just do that. And it may turn out to be completely the wrong answer, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll just do that there. And then finally, we'll do that to there. Right, so by the time we finish doing all this stuff here, they should be full of concrete. Uh, so we need to put things down here. Now, in terms of steel construction, we have all of the uh, the ingots, if you like. You know, they're being produced at quite a rate. I think we calculated them to be... Well, the maximum this is going to create is 90, because each of these is... 30 um, but if you look at the efficiency as I told you it's going to be about 7% down so yeah it's floating around 92 93 like it varies we're going to get about 80 ish just slightly over 80 a minute out of there um, if we put down a constructor and we start looking at uh, the kind of thing we want so for example steel pipe steel pipe takes 15 per minute but if you put down a constructor and have a look at steel beam uh, steel beam needs 30 a minute. Uh, now, the final thing that we want to make is a... requires an assembler. That is the encased industrial beam. That's this thing. So, this requires 16 steel beams per minute. 16. And this one can produce 10. So, we're probably going to need two of these in order to just be able to feed that and get a little bit of a surplus because these things are very useful. Uh, just to be able to go and grab a few. So we're going to make two of these, which means we're going to need 30 of our steel ingots times two. So we need 60 ingots for that one, uh, and we need 15 ingots for this one. That's 75. Uh, 75 out of our limit, which is about 80, is just about okay. We can, we can keep up with that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to build two constructors for this, for the steel beams, and one constructor for the pipes. So we just need to lay it out. Now the assembler for that one will need the concrete, so we need to keep it near the concrete belt if we can. Uh, and also the ones that feed that are going to be on the list side. So the one that produces steel pipes is going to sit on the left side there. Uh, and then we'll have two constructors and then an assembler further down. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to split this thing. Uh, we shall start with high enough pole and that's going to be obviously mark two belt coming out of there and then we're going to have to split this in two which is easily done we can actually do it here if we want to it's actually the easiest thing to do sorry split it in three we're going to have to split it in three which means we need to put it at ground level because if we put a splitter um if we put a splitter there we can't actually yes we can we can put it there let's just put it there and we'll take the straight feed out of that. Yeah, that, that works fine. Ignore me. Um, we'll take the feed out of these things. So one constructor is going to be lined up with this, the output of this effectively. So it's going to look like, and make sure you get the orange near you. So it's going to be something like that. Okay, and then the next one will be next to it and I'll leave one gap like I like to uh, which is there like that and then the third one is going to be one gap away like that so now we're just going to take mark 2 belt 
I don't think Mark II belts even needed, is it? Because uh, if I remember, this thing steel beam only takes 30, so we'll, we'll drop that down to Mark I belt. That can be Mark One, be Mark One, and that can be Mark One. There we go. Drop a power pole down in between each one. Link that to bar. Link that to bar. And then a power pole on this side. Link that to bar. And then link. Daisy chain them together. Uh, pick the recipe. So this one's going to be a steel beam. This one is going to be a steel beam. And this one is going to be the steel pipe. Right, so they're all getting fed with the ingots and stuff. Um, that's no power yet. We'll just leave that for a second. There's no point powering it all up. The other thing to consider is power requirements and how much we've got left, um, which requires us to look at a working power pull, because I can't remember if we've got enough overhead for this. So we're, we've got about 300 megawatts, and we're sort of peaking out uh, about 190, so we've safely got about 100 megawatts. Assembler takes like 50 or so. Um, this takes four, so that's fine. So three, that's only 12 megawatts. The assembler's a bit of a beast. Now, the assembler's going to be fed from both of these and the concrete, if you remember. So what we're going to need to do with, the, with this thing is merge this lot together. Uh, so we'll have a conveyor merger here like that. Make sure the green's coming towards us. Um, how do we want to store in between? Because there is going to be a slight surplus produced. So I think yes is the answer to that. We'll, we'll actually drop in a container. Uh, which will line up on the middle if we can. So we'll merge into a container. So let's put the merge down beforehand. Green, to, green arrow towards us. Line up on the middle. As far back as we can. I'd say, like, there should do it. So, single belt into that. Stick that into container. So, I'll just line that up. Do. Probably move that a little bit closer if we wanted to. Uh, let's see. There you go. Just not not to waste too much space. Um, let's see that chucks out at ten. So yeah, slow belt. It's never ever gonna break that. Uh, and from there we're going to go into the assembler. Now the assembler is going to need the concrete. So it's going to have one input from this and one input from that bus. So what we'll do is we'll line that up so that its left input is about there. So, that's going to be fed with stuff from there. And then this one, we shall probably take around about, let's say, there-ish. Yeah, about there. And then logistics splitter. So, we split. I stand roughly where that is. Ish. It doesn't have to be exact, but, you know, I try. Uh, and then if we flick that onto the encased industrial beam, we can check concrete 20 a minute, so slow belt is fine. Bring that in. That. Drop a power pole down. Connect it. And we can daisy chain off that one. That. So they're all connected up. So concrete's flowing in, so the end product of this is going to be the encased to industrial stuff. And you might think, well, what are we going to do with that? Are we going to stick it into storage? Well, yes we are, but in theory what we should start doing more of is chucking things onto the belt. This is a product and it should be on the belt somewhere. Uh, so what we need to do is just build this out a bit more. On the belt, I mean the bus. Oh, I'm out of concrete. Dang it. Um, luckily for us, there's a bit of concrete lying around. <laughs> we'll just go and steal it off the belt <laughs> rather than run back. 
Okay, let's go. I mean, it's not as quick as picking up a stack of 100, but it's certainly quicker than running back. We only need a bit here. So the bus is going to be like this. And then for now, we can just take a split if we want to. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Let's put one of the one about there-ish. And the one about there. Oh boy, concrete shortage. Can you add them and eat it? I really wish I had a container full of the stuff over here right now. Unfortunately, these things, which look eminently metal when you look at them, need concrete. It's kind of bizarre. That's just the way it is. So that would, let's say, mark one belt, so we'll mark one that to bar. Okay, I'm just going to go and run and grab some ingredients and then we'll carry on. Okay, I grabbed some ingredients, but I also thought we should run back and quickly check on the mem and get it doing some stuff. Analysis of Kateria Moore is complete. Uh, which is going to give us some new stuff. Incoming message. New technologies have been developed based on this new element, primarily in power and electronics, and can now be accessed in Hub Tier 3. Okay. So we'll just get a research in something else. See if we can get something out of this bacon. Oh, uh, how many do you want out of that? Bacon, one. Oh, that's fine. One of them... Okay, we'll, we'll find something out about the bacon. It'll probably just say you've got healing properties, but it might give us something new. If we have a quick look at this tier three, see what she was on about. They are Caterium Technology. Now, look at this. This unlocks a whole bunch of things. So, five in inventory slots on your backpack. Very, very useful. Caterium ingots, which means we can actually make into stuff. Quick wire. Quick wire is made from the ingots. Uh, this is useful for these other items here, like Power Pole Mark II which the power pole mark 2 has six power connectors instead of four the blade runners are incredibly useful you really must get these they make you run a lot quicker you can basically jump higher and when you land you don't take as much fall damage so these are incredibly useful things and then finally we can then scan for Caterium or now in order to do this though we need to sacrifice some stuff to the gods uh, we've got plenty of some of these things uh, but we'll select it as a milestone and then we can chuck in a thousand of those no problem we might as well chuck some cables in uh reinforced stuff we can check is that reinforced what is that reinforced iron plates yeah uh and these rotors now we're making rotors we're making cable um in the factory so let's quickly go and get them and that way we can unlock the blade runner all right grabbed all of the bits and pieces let's quickly Throw some stuff in, so a bit more cable in there, some rotors in there. Get that unlocked. Caterium acquisition unlocked. Additional to new equipment, building, and parts utilizing basic Caterium properties. R and D insisted on inflating your pocket dimensions. <laughs> so they give them us more backpack space, which let's be honest, that's never, never not useful. So in order to make some blade blade runners, we need uh 50 quick wire. 50 quick wire we can make if we mine Caterium ore, which I did leave some in here. Oh, that was sulfur. Wrong one. Wrong one! 50 Caterium ore. I suspect that won't be enough, but we'll see. Uh, Caterium ingots. Get some quick wire. Let's see how much wire it makes. Might need to go and grab a bit more Caterium. Yeah, that's going to be pretty close, isn't it? 40. What a scumbag! 48. Where was it? Was this the... Uh... Hang on. Oh, man. That is deeply depressing. 600 meters away. I can make 48 and I need 50. Can you actually believe that? like ridiculously close to having blade runners so blade runners I've got that I've got that and I need two pieces of quick wire and the nearest ore is 600 meters away <sighs> okay that's gonna have to be for the next day 
we'll go and grab that later. Maybe we'll chuck a couple of portable miners on it just so we've got some stuff. For now, though, let's focus on finishing this off. It would have been nice to grab the Blade Runners for you, but hey, wasn't to be. They are really, really useful, though. Uh, probably the most used thing in the game, I think. Because at the moment, you only have one slot. And, you know, you put the Blade Runners on here. You put the jetpack on here. The gas mask goes on here. I don't know why you can't wear Blade Runners on your leg and a gas mask at the same time. I have no clue how that works, but the game currently doesn't let you do that. Um, right, what have we got? So nothing there. So what I was going to do was quickly build this a touch. Right, so this stuff here, uh, we shall put onto a bus, which will be this bus here. Um, and the way we get it onto the bus from something like this is take the output like that and then we'll elevate it up like this and then we'll just basically create a merge uh, now that does mean that nothing downstream can use that line anymore um, well actually it doesn't mean that you could put something else down the line there and it would merge it and that can be perfectly fine when you're only dealing with something that's producing four per minute um, you know you might want to put other things on the line and that's fine but just be aware you can't split them off yet until you've got the, the um, what do they call it the the filter splitter or the smart splitter or whatever it's called it lets you pick items off the line uh, so for now what I'm going to do is this is a temporary solution uh, and you may think I'm being completely crazy doing this like why don't I just send it into storage for now I could do but for now we'll just do this just so we're nice and neat and tidy that And we'll put that in there. It's being picky. Wouldn't let me de elevate quite so much. Wait, right, encroaching on another's clearance. It would help if I put the storage container the right way around. Do you know how many times this catches me out? I don't know why the game doesn't default to just automatically facing the green arrow away from you. 90% of the time, that's what you want to do. So that'll do. That'll put that into there. Uh, we can always put a, a chip in this if you want to, just to get it to ramp up a bit. Uh, on a machine like this, that is not a terrible idea. But you do need to check the, the ratios you've got coming in and out check the power because that's about to jump up uh let's go and grab a shard just so that we can boost that it might bring it from four up to say six um actually hmm. we said we wanted to have a surplus of stuff now if i ramp that up let me just check on what that's going to do require i'm not worried about the concrete yeah, 16 per minute steel beams, and we're only producing 20, aren't we? So the, the downside of if we overclock this is we won't have any surplus of steel beams, and I kind of like having a surplus of steel beams, which will start to build up in here. Uh, so we won't overclock it. We'll leave it for now. But there you go. There's the encased stuff coming out. First one off the production line. Uh, that's going to go onto the bus, and then for now we're just storing it. Um... We can tear this down later, not a problem. Um, so that's that done. Then we've just got the steel pipes which are being made here. Same principle, uh, do we want to put them on the bus? Well, you know, we could stick them on the same bus as the other things and just mix it up. Uh, so 15 of them coming out per minute, we just stick them in the same as that. It's an option. If we want to do it, what we do is we'll just need to get above this problem is rising out of here is the issue so you have to kind of get and this is the worst part you have to literally get there you go. so we could do that and then we can basically mix this belt just to show you it working basically I mean 
it's up to you whether you do this or not. Um, we're more or less just going to be storing this stuff for now, so it doesn't really matter. Um, oh yeah, now this is a good one. So you can't put down the merger because it's basically encroaching on the belt above it. And there's only one way around this, and that is to remove the belt, put the merger in, and then put the belt in. Actually, or is it the way around? One second. I think it's the other way around. You put the belt in, and then you put the merger in. Yeah, my bad. So basically, um, you can actually stack... It's really weird, this. You can actually stack splitters um, on top of each other like that. It doesn't mind, but it won't let you put the belts in. You have to put the belts first. It's one of those kind of hacks and satisfactory, if you like. So that will put them onto there. That will then go down to here, merge them, and, and everything will end up in this container. So we'll end up with pipes. Um, pipes and industrial beams in here. If that's not what you want, don't put them on the same belt. Just put them on a different belt. But for now, it really doesn't matter. We don't have the smart splitters yet. So if you want to start manufacturing other things from these, uh, we're going to have a problem. But by then, I think we'll have smart splitters. Right, I think what I'll do is I'll run over and grab some of that Kateria more. Um, and then we'll make some blades, and that seems like a good place to stop. Right, I've come out to this Kataria more, and it's like the, in an absolute nightmare of a spot. It's underneath two giant boulders, which I can't get rid of. Um, but I'm near a power slug, and getting over there is even a problem. Let's see if we can grab this power slug before we do anything else. Let's put down a big... A big piece. Might as well grab that. Come on. So yeah, if we ever want to mine this, I don't, I don't think we're going to be mining this one uh, because this is in a horrible position. Let's just get this done. Even getting out of here is going to be bad enough. Okay. There we go. Look at that. It's a pure one, though. So what I did was I brought some of these miners with us. So we'll put them down just to make life a little bit easier. I mean, these things are pretty easy to make, so I'm not really worried about not taking them back. Uh, and then we'll put a... We'll put a steep ramp down. I don't know, you've got to build your way out of things in this game. There we go. Well, let's get out of here. Uh, so we only wanted a tiny bit of this stuff. But already, these machines... I mean, this should keep us going for a little bit anyway. We'll take a take a couple of hundred of this back. And then we can build some Blade Runners nicely. Yeah, so we'll just leave them. We don't care about them. They'll get full and then they'll sit there and do nothing. Maybe we'll use them later. Let's get back to the factory. Right, I've run back. I've made all the Katerium into ingots, all of the ingots into quick wire. And we should have enough for a lovely pair of Blade Runners. There we go. You only need one set. You don't need any more. You can only wear one set, so... That goes in your body slot, and now you can run around a lot quicker. Now, you might think, that doesn't seem quicker. It is. Look how slow that is. And look how much quicker that is. Additionally, you can sort of jump a little bit further, so you can you can get a bit higher over things. Uh, and also, you can basically take fall damage a bit better. So, say you was up here, and um, you, you know you jump off, it might injure you without Blade Runners on. With this on, you'll take less fall damage because it gives you like bionic legs, so you can way look how far you can go, and then no damage. So they're pretty cool. 
So yeah, I just wanted to show you that. Uh, so now we have stuff being manufactured from steel. We have end products of steel. So things are looking nice. Let's quickly check up on the mem. Uh, because we probably need to load something else. No, if we didn't already. Or is that finished now? Yeah, there we go. The bacon agaric is complete. Incoming message. Amanita lardum or bacon agaric can be added to the object scanner catalog after unlocking the new blueprint in hub tier one. So what that means is exploration basics. Um, if we get ourselves an object scanner, which, you know, they're quite easy to make. You just need to sacrifice a bunch of things to them. It then lets you select on the scanner bacon agaric and you can go and find that specific thing. I'm not too worried about that right now. Uh, I think there's other things we can focus on. The yellow shard we don't need. The heavy modular frame we're going to have to unlock. Logistics Mark III gives us the Mark III conveyor belt and this gives us the Xeno Basher. Uh, when we go exploring we're definitely going to want to get that. But to be honest I think this is probably more of an important milestone for us initially. Uh, we just need to make 25 modular frames, 50 motors, you know, you can see. A few things here that we can uh, semi-automate. But for now, let's just quickly put some of this stuff in the, the pale berry. We can find out what it does. It's definitely worth trying to, you know, research and unlock um, as much stuff as you can in the game, as quickly as you can, because, it, you know, it gives you more choices over what you can do and gives you more equipment to use. Uh, and that kind of thing. So if we just quickly check this, we should see that the pipes are going down here. They're then merging with these things, and we should have a container with both of them in there. So as soon as this thing, you know, fills up, this will back back up. Obviously, we could add another storage container, or we can use we can build the next one once we unlock Logistics Mark Three. It gives us the, the double stack container. I'll be honest, the double stack container is convenient. But the ingredients to make it are, you know, they're crazy compared to the the simple, the very, very simple cost of just doing this and stacking on top and belting up. But, you know, it's convenience, isn't it? Anyway, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed that. We've got some wonderful steel production going on. Uh, so next one, we're going to carry on with the factory building and get a bit more stuff done and unlock some more tech. Until the next one, take care, guys. Happy manufacturing.